Hi, it's Andy again, and uh, today's tutorial is going to be on catching exceptions. So I've made a little sample app with some of the most commonly uh, found errors with uh, developing an Android app and uh, how to actually use the debugger or the logcat to um, fix our, our issues. So uh, just to give you a little list of what some of the most common exceptions that are going to be found in Android. and some of these are very easy to fix. Uh, null pointer exception, and I'll go into what a null pointer is. Class cast exception, stack overflow error, uh, activity not found exception, which is very easy to fix. And even I still do this every, seems like every day. Um, but uh, this is a pretty easy one to fix. Um, and out of memory error, so most commonly, uh, handling Im images since they take up a lot of uh, memory um, and then uh, security exception which is also a pretty easy fix um, so let's dive into uh, our null pointer exception since that's what we're gonna start with uh, let's see what happens when we run our app okay so it's gonna crash and the launcher actually crashes as well but uh, we get this error here that's a null pointer. Um, let's see, null pointer exception uh, right here. So this tells you exactly what type of exception we caused. And it's uh, trying to invoke a virtual method um, on click listener on something that doesn't exist. And it's, it's a null object. And the reason why it's null is because we haven't initialized it yet. So we have our button here. But we haven't actually, you know, told the system what the button is. But we're trying to say, oh yeah, well we want to be able to click it and do stuff with it. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. So an easy fix for this. Um, and sometimes the null po pointer exceptions can hide on you and be kind of hard to find. So I'm going to do button. The find view for ID by ID. Uh, r dot id dot um, button. Okay, so here's our button. Uh, if we open up our, it's we got the right name here, button, and uh, it's going to say initialize me before using. Notice I'm using the correct layout here. Uh, that will come in to play with example number two. So when we rerun this. Sorry about that. So when we run this, our null pointer is now fixed, and we can actually use it. See, our button is now initialized. So let's uh, create a new exception, and let's do something with it. Okay, we'll copy this. Now when we try to run this, it's going to have an error. See? And we have another null pointer exception here as well. But you're saying, well, why didn't the it seems like a valid ID. Hang on, sorry. Okay, I think I got rid of all the notifications that I'm going to get. So, as I was saying, this is uh, the uh, compiler didn't catch this error because there is an actual resource in the project called dummy button. Um, it's in this uh, XML resource that I'm not actually using. So, that's why this is actually uh, not catching this error. So, we need to use the correct button. Um, you can have the same name for two items on a single um, XML document, but you can't, or sorry, you can't have them on the same document, but you can have them on different XML documents. Um, it'll be able to figure out the difference between the two at runtime, but um, when you're doing uh, 
this, you have to be very careful to pick the right name for the, the resource you're trying to use. So uh, in this example, we would just get rid of it to fix the, the null pointer exception. Um, because we only have one button and uh, we're already using it. Okay, so that fixes our null pointer exception. So now let's rerun our app with the fix. Okay, and that's all working. So now let's go to the next one, which is a class cast exception. Uh, now, this one will be caught in this example, but it doesn't always get caught um, by the, the compiler. So when we open up our class cast, we actually do have this error here. Um, but you can see that our in here, the type of error we're having is a class cast exception. And it's telling us exactly what our issue is right here. Uh, our, our linear layout in our resource, uh, let's see if I see how we've given this resource a linear layout um, name. And uh, in our Java code, we're trying to call it a relative layout. And it's being caught here, but it won't always be caught. So this is kind of just a, a, an overview. If you see a class cast exception, it means that you're trying to tell something to do something that it, it doesn't know how to do properly because you're not you haven't named it the right thing. So in this case, uh, this our fix would be just a linear layout. Change it to a linear layout. We'll import linear layout. Get rid of relative layout. And when we run that. Our problem has fixed. So this is an example of trying to give attributes a wrong class type. All right, so two down. Let's go to the next one. The next one is going to be Stack Overflow. Now, I just wanted to give you a visual how to do what would cause a Stack Overflow. Uh, I wasn't actually successful in causing this as an error, uh, but you'll see what not to do. So I have a bunch of views on top of each other for this. Um, let's close these out. Let's pull up our Stack Overflow. So as you can see, I have like a ton of views in a single XML file. And uh, you don't want to do that. Um, if you do this, you may produce a Stack Overflow exception. So that's why I wanted to kind of show you what not to do. This is excessive. It is. You don't want to have just view on top of view on top of view uh, inside a single XML resource. There's uh, better ways to reuse resources, especially if they're um, the same type of resource or if you're doing stacked on top of each other like this. If you want to do a list view or even a rel um, recycler view if you have like images and stuff like that in on top of each other. Um, so this one doesn't actually produce the error, but it could. Um, maybe on a low resource device um, where the VM heap is pr pretty low, this might actually cause either stack overflow or an out of memory error. So uh, you don't want to do this. This is a pretty bad idea. All right. So the next one we have is activity not found. Now I do this all the time and it's pretty easy mistake to do because it's an error of omission. So we're going to get this error here. Oops, let's scroll down. See, it's going to tell us activity not found. Uh, or have you declared this activity in your Android manifest XML? Well, no, I haven't. That's our issue. It's pretty easy fix. Just open up your Android manifest and just add your activity. So activity not found. So let's reload this. And see, if you can see this, the activity was declared. Very easy fix. 
Uh, but uh, if you're not reading your log cats, it could drive you crazy. Like, why isn't this working? Everything looks right. Uh, yeah, make sure you read these. These do generally tell you exactly what's wrong. And in this case, um, it tells you um, on item click main activity line 55. So that number is line 55. I don't have the line numbers in here. Uh, I know I can add them. Let's see. Show line numbers. So line 55. So you can see that right here. Start activity. All right, but that's not really telling you the full issue. The full issue is actually uh, right here in line 46. So it's not perfect, but it does tell you kind of what the issue is. The issue was starting the activity. So we couldn't start the activity because it wasn't called, but it didn't tell you uh, exactly which line to um, that was the issue. And in fact, it didn't even tell you the right uh, file, except if you read it up here, it tells you you have to have you declared in your Android manifest. So when you open up, you got to add it and you're done. So I do this one all the time. Um, if you're not reading this, it will drive you crazy. All right, so the next one is going to be the out of memory error. And this is going to be exactly what not to do with images. So we're going to get this out of memory error. If you can read it here, see out of memory uh, at line 14. But the actual error here. Error inflating class image view. And that's because I took inside this image view for out of memory. I have just this um, this large image here. And how large is it? Well, it's four megabytes, which you wouldn't think, oh, well, I have three gigs of RAM on my Nexus 6 or on my Note. Why would four megabyte image cause issues? Well, you don't actually have all that uh, RAM available to you at all times. You have to uh, know how to manage them. And there's no reason to stick this ridiculously large image. Let me show you the actual image. It's, it even takes my regular desktop. A decent bit to load and it is very resource intense to do this type of thing uh, yeah it's even slowing it down <laughs> so it's picture it's like a wallpaper image of an Audi but it's very resource intense to do this type of thing um, see 4.4 megabytes uh, here's how many pixels it, 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 it's insane how big this image is so what you what you would want to do is, um, if especially if you're downloading images from the internet, uh, the best thing to do would be to shrink them on the server side before you download them. Uh, but if you if that's not an option, uh, to shrink them to fit your resource, uh, and not to use this scale type fit x y to do your shrinking for you. Um, this doesn't compress the image. Uh, the same way. So what you would want to do is create a separate bitmap, um, shrink the image, and then uh, assign your image view to that resource. And you can still do fit XY in there, and it'll make sure that it lines up nicely in there. Well, as nicely as possible. If you don't have the right aspect ratio, it's going to look kind of stretched. Uh, but you know. It's better to, if you know your, your fixed size for your, or your aspect ratio, uh, to actually make, download your bitmap, convert it into the right aspect ratio, and then load it uh, and in a much smaller size so uh, that you don't get this out of memory error. Okay, so we have one more error to do, and it's also a pretty easy fix. Um, this is Android security. Uh, basically, what this means is, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you're downloading uh, apps from the Play Store or somewhere, uh, as you see, it, it tells you what permissions are being uh, requested by um, the app. And one of the most common ones is, uh, is the Internet. You need to access the Internet for most apps. So uh, 
I have an app here. The uh, issue I'm having here oh, so it is going to be loading a web page, but we can't. We're, we're not able to load Google.com, and that seems kind of odd. But that's because we haven't asked for the permission to access the internet. So again, let's go back into our Android manifest. And we're going to add one line here, uses permission. Uh, and we're going to look for Android permission internet. And once we request the internet and re uh, access the internet and rerun it, On our handy dandy app here, I'll load it. Boom. Google.com loads uh, just fine. And now it opened it up in the web view, probably because of the, the website that I picked. But you can load a website into a web view um, and uh, test that out if you want. So, security, you just have a web view and then uh, load URL. All right, so I hope this uh, this uh, video helps you solve some of your headaches. Um, obviously, there's many, many more issues, uh, a lot of Java issues that I didn't discuss in here. Uh, the only real one that's a Java issue is the null pointer exception. Um, that's basic Java knowledge is that you have to uh, initialize something before you use it. Uh, and basically, that null pointer, mean, null meaning uh, zero or does not exist um, and then the pointer being a reference so uh, when you start this app um, and load this activity there's a, a reference made in the memory for that particular item and if you have a null pointer it means there's no reference to that item and that you're trying to access and use so uh, make sure you initialize everything before you try to use it uh, if I had taken out this set on click listener, there wouldn't be uh, a crash. You, it just wouldn't do anything. Um, like if I take out all this, we'll still be able to load a button if we wanted to. Just like we could load a, a text view, it just won't do anything when we try to use it. So even though there's a null pointer, it really doesn't matter because it's just an XML resource that's doing something to it. So it just knows to put a button there, uh, but not to do anything. If we need to do anything that requires Java code, we need to initialize it before we can use it. All right, so I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, let me know, and have a good day.